Welcome back to the Jacob and Josh Network. This week, we've got a fun episode planned for you guys. Yeah, to start us off, we've got the rest of the story of Elijah for Mrs. Matter. The finale we've all been waiting for. And now, to that. Hi guys, welcome to Children's Church, and welcome back to part two of the adventures of Elijah and waiting with God. Did you all have a chance to practice waiting with God this week? Reading your Bible, praying, listening, obeying to the promptings of the Lord? Because when we do that, a bonus is we also have some adventures. Last week, we talked about some of Elijah's adventures. So remember, he had um, he had prayed for the drought, and God caused a drought. God sent ravens to feed him. Then he met with the widow, and God provided food for the widow, her son, and for Elijah. And God raised the widow's son from the dead. Pretty awesome adventures, don't you think? We left off with Elijah talking to the wicked king Ahab and setting up a meeting so that everybody would come to Mount Carmel and they would prove once and for all who the true God was. So once again, with the help of our very good friend, Elijah Merchant, let's get on with our story. We left off with Elijah talking to King Ahab. It was agreed that all of the people would be gathered so that it could be decided who the one true God is. From every corner of Israel, people came to Mount Carmel wondering what was going to happen. Can you just hear the people murmuring, what's happening? What is he going to do? What is he going to do? Listen, you'll find out. After the people were gathered around him, he said in a loud and powerful voice, How long will you people not decide which God you will follow? If the Lord is God, follow him. If Baal is God, then follow him. No one knew what to say, so he didn't say anything. Elijah proclaimed, I am a lone prophet of the Lord, but Baal has 450 prophets. Wait. 450 against one? That's not fair. Elijah wasn't really looking for fair. Remember, he was waiting with God. Every stop and adventure on the way to this moment prepared Elijah to trust God. He was willing to do whatever it took to turn the hearts of the people back to God. Still, wasn't he scared? Did he do karate? Well, the Bible doesn't mention that he brought any weapons or used karate, but... He had something even bigger. Remember, he had the one true God on his side. Oh, yeah. Okay, back to the story. Elijah said to the people, Let the 450 prophets offer a sacrifice to Baal, and I will offer one to the God of heaven. The other prophets can go first. Neither of us will light a fire under the sacrifice. The God who sends fire down to burn up the sacrifice is the true God. The people agreed that this was a good plan. Elijah stood by as the prophets of Baal prepared their sacrifice and called on their God from morning till noon. The prophets leaped and danced. Oh, Baal, hear us. There was no answer from Baal. At noon, Elijah mocked the prophets. Cry louder. Maybe Baal is talking or away on a journey. Hmm, maybe he's asleep and needs to be woken. Keep in mind that Elijah already was not very well liked by the prophets of Baal. They believed that Baal was in control of the weather, and yet they had not had any rain for three and a half years because of Elijah praying to the God of heaven and asking him to stop the rain. The prophets of Baal cried louder than ever, leaping around in a wild frenzy, begging their God to answer, Oh, Baal, hear us! They continued to dance and leap around until late into the afternoon. Still, nothing happened. Elijah then called the people near him as he prepared his sacrifice. He didn't want them to miss a thing because he knew that his God would consume the offering with fire and prove once and for all that he was the only true God. Elijah knew his God well. First, they watched as Elijah took 12 stones and rebuilt a broken altar of the Lord. Then he put the wood in place and laid the sacrifice on the altar. Next, 
He made a trench all around the altar of the Lord and made a very strange request. Listen to this. He told the people to fill 12 large jars with water and throw it all over the sacrifice until it was soaked and the trench was filled to the brim with the water. Wait, what? How can a sacrifice burn if it's wet? Great question. It can't. At least not by Elijah. That was the point he was trying to make. There was absolutely no way it could be consumed by fire except by the hand of God. Elijah wanted everyone to know who the real God was. The people watched, and I'm pretty sure they were all holding their breath as Elijah came to the altar and prayed, Lord God of Israel, let it be known today that you are God, and I am your servant who has done all these things at your command. Hear me, O Lord, so that these people will know you are the Lord God and turn back to you. Then, guess what happened next? Suddenly, a great fire fell from heaven. The altar, the sacrifice, the water, even the dust of the ground was consumed by fire. Everything was burned. Did the people worship the God of heaven after all? Yes. The people fell on their faces and exclaimed, The Lord, he is God. The Lord, he is God. The whole nation worshipped the Lord as the only living God. You can imagine that was an experience that no one on that mountain would ever forget, nor could they deny the mighty power of the one true God. The 450 prophets cried out all day long with no answer. Elijah petitioned God for less than a minute, and God answered. But the adventures weren't over yet, remember. There was still no rain, so it was time to send rain down to the earth. Elijah went up to the top of Mount Carmel and fell on the ground to pray. Then he told his servant to go and look out to the sea for a rain cloud. The servant reported there was nothing. Elijah kept praying and sent the servant one time, two times, three times, four times, five times, six times, seven times to look for rain. The seventh time, the servant reported, there is a small cloud the size of a man's hand rising out of the sea. That was all Elijah needed to hear. He knew that cloud would grow and send rain to the earth. Elijah sent a servant to King Ahab to tell him the rain was coming. The people had repented and turned back to God, and the Lord blessed them with rain and food once more. But wait, there's more! After a very full day of watching prophets yell and jump around and then preparing and offering a sacrifice himself, Elijah ran a 14-mile marathon in the rain. In fact, he ran so fast that the Bible tells us that he caught up with King Ahab, who was in his chariot pulled by horses, and Elijah ran ahead of him on foot. Wow, just like the scripture, we will run and not be weary. Yep, Isaiah 40, verse 31. We watched as God allowed that drought to last for three and a half years. That's a long time. I mean, we've been going through the COVID for, oh, maybe four and a half, five months, and it seemed like a long time. They went for three and a half years. What do you think would have happened if God had not allowed it to go that long? Do you think the people would have repented on Mount Carmel? Hmm. Well, we know that God's timing is perfect, and he knew exactly how long they needed. And remember, the main event wasn't the fire coming down from heaven. It was not even the rain coming down or all the other miracles. The main event was the people turning their hearts back to God. And we know that both Elijah and God were waiting together for that very thing to happen. So during COVID, do you think maybe God could have some higher plans? What do we need to do? We need to listen and we need to obey. Maybe you can go to your mom and say, you know, mom, during this COVID, I have some extra time. How about if I help you clean out that closet you've been wanting to clean out? And 
Maybe that's the adventure God has planned for you. Maybe you're going to build a memory that you will never forget. Or maybe you'll find a treasure. We don't know. We do know that God can use bad things like the COVID to make good things happen if we listen and obey. Let's pray. Oh, Lord God, we know you are sovereign. And we know that amidst this hard time of waiting, it's so much easier if we wait with you. Oh, help us to listen. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, guys, I hope you feel better about waiting during this time. I know I do. It's a lot easier to wait with God than to wait for him. Have a blessed week. Bye-bye. Thank you for that awesome story, Miss Madden. You know, I always wondered if that story was on a Sunday. Because, you know, I always liked a little bit of caramel on my Sunday. You know, caramel's almost as sweet as your hair, Josh. It's looking extra sweet today. Hershey's bars. <laughs> anyway, here at JJN, we don't just tell the news. We make you tell the news. Now take a minute to pause the video and talk about what you've just learned. It's time for, for the, the fine, fine art, art report. <sighs> well, guys, sadly, we have no new artwork today. But due to a clerical error, we actually forgot a piece of Miles' artwork from last week, thanks to a certain pastor by the name of Sean. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna be, um, well, Jacob and I will both be um, talking about this. Um, Jacob's opinion is very valid, as you can see by his lack of face. Anyway, um, so here we can see um, Jesus telling the fishermen to follow him. And I think this is truly spectacular, not only because of the message it sends, but the fact that there are two pieces of paper showing Jesus and the disciples and how they're being combined into one across the page. And also how much creativity Miles must have had that he had to use two pieces of paper because one was not enough. And I think that is truly splendid. Thank you, Miles. Oh, I'm back. Okay. That's great artwork, Miles. But as heinous a crime as forgetting somebody's artwork is, we decided to deal out due justice for one Mr. Pastor Sean. So as a result, he was required to create his own artwork and we have some special guests here to review it and criticize. some delectable snacks from two raisin bros. Fun <sighs> wheels, more like new von ring. This is Ben, ben an additional, additional fine art report. report. <laughs> Are you okay, bro? Okay, bro! That has been the fine art report. And personally, I think they did it better than us. We've got some serious competition out there now. <laughs> Please don't take our jobs. This is my only source of income. Thank Gosh, you. And we're not getting paid anything. Thank you, Eminem, for that <laughs> special feature. <laughs> um, but now to Sarah Williams for another memory verse about um, never losing your runningness. Hey guys. I'm really excited for today because we have a super fun activity that we're gonna do to help us memorize this verse. So this week's memory verse is actually gonna be the same one that it was last week. Do you guys remember what it is? Take a guess. If you guessed 
Isaiah 40, 31, then you would be correct. Do you guys also remember last week we did some motions to help us memorize this verse? Well, before we get into our fun activity, um, I want to just give ourselves a little bit of a refresher on the verse. So if you remember the motions, then go ahead and do those with me, and let's say this verse together. Okay, it's Isaiah 40, 31. But those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Okay, so remember last week we were talking about waiting with God and how when we do that, we'll mount up with wings like eagles, which means that um, we'll be able to get some perspective on our situation and see the whole big picture. And when we wait with God during that season of waiting, he can use that to teach us stuff. Well, this week, I want to focus on the part of this verse where it says, they shall run and not be weary. So guess what we're gonna do today? We're gonna do some running. So the activity is going to be, we're gonna run until we get tired, and then we're gonna practice this verse, and then we're gonna run some more, and then we're gonna practice this verse. And don't worry, I'll be doing this with you guys. Let's go. So I'm in the field at my house right now, just so I have a little bit more room to do this. But I really want you guys to do this with me. So um, I don't know if you're able to take this video outside, probably not. So um, you can just do this where you are. You can run in place. Um, you could run in circles or uh, run in a straight line if you have room in your house to do that. But please um, be careful and don't run into anything. So if it's safer for you to just run in place, then please just do that. We don't want anyone getting hurt. So um, I'll explain this again. Basically, we're just gonna be running till we get tired and then practicing this verse. So I guess here I go. How about you guys? Okay, let's go over this verse again. So, Isaiah 40, 31. But those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Good job, guys. You're awesome for doing that. And how about we do it again? I know I'm tired, you guys might be tired, but we got this. We're gonna do it together. Okay, here we go. try this one more time. Isaiah 40 31. But those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Great job guys. You are awesome. Thank you so much for doing that with me. And I want to give you guys a challenge. I want you to do this again at least one time this week. So before next Sunday, I want you guys to um, get outside and run around and when you get tired, practice our memory verse and then do it again. I want you guys to do that at least two times. I trust that you guys will Take up my challenge and do that at least once and maybe you'll even do it twice this week. I don't know, that'd be pretty awesome. So I will say a prayer for you guys as you head off into your week. Dear Lord, thank you so much 
for your beautiful creation and for your word and that we get to memorize it and thank you especially for this verse Isaiah 40 31 and all the things that we can learn from it um, help us this week to remember that you are the one that gives us our strength in Jesus name amen have a great week guys bye Jacob I don't want to fly but it's fun <laughs> This is what I have to deal with on a daily basis. Ow. Anyway, thank you, Sarah Williams, for that amazing memory verse. Yep. Please remember to send in artwork and join us next time on the Josh and Jacob Network. See you guys next week. Meals, more like meals on wings.